Question number 10, Honourable Ruth Dyson. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Conservation. Did he receive the draft submission on the Rui Tanifa Dam proposal, which was requested by Doris Johnson, Deputy Director General at the Department of Conservation, to be delivered on Tuesday 30th of July? If so, on what date? Honourable Tony Ryle. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Conservation, uh, I am advised that, as he has previously advised, he did not receive the draft referred to until Tuesday last week after hearing about it on Radio New Zealand's Morning Report. He did receive the final submission on the 31st of July, Wednesday. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Honourable Ruth Dyson. Were the contents of the submission he received consistent with the briefing on the draft submission he received on Monday 29 July? And if not, did he question the inconsistency? Uh, Honourable Tony uh, Rowe. On behalf of the Minister uh, acting in his stead, I'm unable to give an answer specifically on that, other than to say that, uh, as Doris Johnston has said previously, the Minister never saw the draft submission that is being talked about. It was never provided to his office. It was an internal walking draft that staff accessed, or rather managers accessed and decided they would not make that decision, uh, that submission. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Honourable Ruth Dyson. Why did he say to reporters on Thursday 19 September, quote, there was no mention to me of a draft submission I did not know of the existence of a draft submission. When he was briefed on the content of that draft submission on Monday 29 July, expressed concern about it and asked for a copy of it before it was submitted. Well, on, on behalf Rob. of the Minister, the Minister's been quite clear. If, if you look at the note, if you look at the note that he's received, he was, he's been advised that the Ministry was evaluating the proposed plan and that a preliminary view is that a submission should be lodged on the plan. Uh, as Doris Johnston made very clear, quote, the minister did not play any role in my decision order. making. Point, point order. of order. Point of order. And I'm Lantari. sorry to interrupt my colleague, but three times uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson accused the minister of lying. Now, that is not parliamentary language. And I ask you to withdraw that. If the, if the Honourable Ruth Dyson did so, that is unparliamentary, would she stand withdraw? I withdraw and apologise. Thank you. Supplementary question, Supplementary. Honourable Ruth Dyson. When and how was he informed that a senior order, staff order, member resigned... Order. I'm going to ask the member to start that again. I couldn't hear above the interjection. When and how was he informed that a senior staff member resigned because the original submission on the Ruatanifa Dam proposal was withdrawn. Honourable Tony uh, Ryle. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, the Minister has made it clear that he, was, uh, he had not been informed of, the, of those circumstances uh, when he uh, last answered that question in the House, which I think was yesterday. Supplementary question, Honourable Ruth Dyson. Is he ruling out any link between the withdrawal of the original submission and the staff member's resignation? Honourable Tony Mr Ryan. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I'm not in a position, as the Minister answering his stead, to be able to comment on that, but because, because that would actually be up to the, minister, the, um, the employee to talk about. The real issue, though, here is the suggestion, the suggestion that the Minister... Point of order. Point of order, Grant uh, The Minister made clear that he was unable to answer that question. There's nothing more that he can add to the situation, no. apart from getting the Minister down and here. On the, and on this occasion, I finally agree with Grant oh. Robertson. Further supplementaries. Question number 11, Honourable Tohanato. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Customs. What is Customs doing to stem the tide of illegal psychoactive substances? Mr. Honourable Speaker. Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, the New Zealand Customs Service is dedicating a lot of time and resource to stopping illegal psychoactive substances crossing our border. Just yesterday, sir, I announced that tens of millions of dollars of psychoactive substances had been intercepted at our border in a seven-month operation called Operation Static. 
the harm prevented to our communities is substantial. For example, seizing 80 kilograms of Class C analogues worth $21 million, sir, prevents $32 million of harm in our community.